We've already gone through what the components of a streaming integration platform are. Today we're going to talk about how you go about evaluating streaming data integration platforms based on these components. So just to reiterate, um, firstly you need the platform to be able to do real-time continuous data collection. Then you need to be able to have it move that data continuously from where it's collected to where it's going. You need to be able to support delivery to all the different targets that you care about. You need to be able to process the data as it's moving, so stream processing. This all needs to be enterprise grade so that it is scalable and reliable and all those other things that you care about for mission critical data. And you need to be able to get insights and alerts on that data movement. So let's think about the things that you need to consider in order to actually achieve this when you're evaluating such platforms. Well, firstly, for data collection and delivery, you care about quite a few different things. Firstly, it needs to be low latency. If this is a streaming data integration platform, then just doing bulk loads or kind of micro batch uh, may not be sufficient. You want to be able to collect the data the instant it's created, so within milliseconds typically. So you need low latency data collection. It needs to be able to support all the sources that you care about. So if you're looking for a streaming integration platform, then you're thinking more than just one use case. You're thinking what platform is going to support all of the streaming data integration needs within my organization. So supporting just one data source or a couple of data sources isn't enough. You need to be able to support all the sources that you care about now and may care about in the future. So that could be databases, files, messaging systems, could even be IoT. Uh, so think about that when you're evaluating whether the platform has all the sources that you need and that it can deal with those sources in a number of different ways. For databases, um, you may need to be able to do bulk loads into a streaming infrastructure as well as doing change data capture, which is important for collecting real-time change as it's happening in the database, the inserts, updates and deletes. For files, you may need to do bulk files, but also you know, files that exist already, but also files as they're created and stream out data as it's being written. So supporting both bulk and change data is equally important. You also need to consider whether the adapters are actually part of the platform or they are third party. If they're part of the platform and the platform is built well, then it means that they will be able to uh, handle all the different requirements of the platform, scalability, reliability, recoverability, all of those things, will be integrated end to end because the adapters are part of the platform. If they're third party, then that may not be the case. And if you have to plug in third party components into your infrastructure, then you can have areas of brittleness uh, where things may not work properly or uh, problematic interfaces when things change. So try and avoid third party adapters wherever you can. And the data collection and the data delivery need to be able to support the end to end recovery and reliability that is part of being enterprise grade. So that means that from a uh, database perspective, for example, you may need to be able to support maintaining a database transaction context from one end to the other. You need to be able to uh, pick up from where you left off and make sure that every data that is uh, collected is delivered to all of the appropriate targets. And these could be variable and different. You might be delivering some data on premise and some data to the cloud but you still need to be able to make sure that all the data has made it there. So you need to be able to validate that the data is being written to all the different sources and targets that uh, the platform is supporting. And so if it's part of a platform and they're not third party, you would expect that to be there. If they are third party, then you can have to investigate whether all of those things are supported. So the data collection and data del delivery is the first part of uh, how you evaluate the platform. The next part is how does it do data movement? And this is crucial to maintaining the kind of high throughput and low latency that you'd expect. Now, data movement is a, a number of different things. It's 
between processing steps, so between your source collection and your data delivery, between source collection, maybe some in-memory processing, maybe some enrichment, and data delivery, or even a more complex pipeline with multiple steps in it, you're moving data between each step. It's also between nodes. So if you have a clustered platform, and that platform is moving data between nodes for different processing steps or maybe between source and target because the target is closer to one of the nodes than other nodes. Um, you need to be able to ensure that the data movement happens uh, efficiently with high throughput and low latency between nodes. You also need to be able to support collecting data on premise and delivering it into cloud environments or collecting it from cloud environments and delivering it to on premise or moving between clouds. So supporting all these different topologies is all part of data movement. Ideally, as much of the data movement as possible should be in memory only. Um, you shouldn't try and avoid having to write to disk or do any kind of I.O. in between processing steps, for example. And the reason for this is that each processing step um, needs to perform optimally in order to get high throughput. If you are persisting data, that can add latency. Um, so ideally, when you're doing multiple processing steps in a pipeline, you're doing all of that data movement in memory only between the steps or just between nodes. You're not persisting to disk. You should only use persistent data movement, persistent data streams where needed. And there are a couple of really good use cases for this. One is if you have data sources that you can't rewind into for recoverability, you may want to use a persistent data stream as the first step in a process. But everything downstream can be in memory only. And also if you're collecting data uh, in real time, but you have multiple applications that all run at their own speeds against that data, you may want to think about having persistent data streams between uh, different steps. But typically you want to minimize the amount of persistent data streams that you have and use in-memory only data streams wherever possible, because that will really aid in reducing your latency and increasing your throughput. The next thing that you need to be able to do is stream processing. And stream processing obviously has to be able to support all of the different types of processing that you want to do. So for example, um, it needs to be able to support complex transformations. And if it doesn't support the transformations you want, you should be able to add in your own components or your own user-defined functions to do the transformations. It needs to be able to combine and enrich data. And this requires a lot of different constructs for stream processing. When you're combining data together from multiple data streams, they run at high speed. And typically, events aren't going to happen at the same time. So you need a flexible uh, windowing structure that can maintain a set of events from different data streams to combine together in order to be able to uh, produce a, a combined output stream that has the last data from every stream apart from the current data from the current one. When you're enriching data, you need to be able to join streaming data with reference data. Now you can't go back to a database or go back to the original source of the reference data for every event on a data stream because it's just too slow. You need to be able to load and cache and kind of remember the data you're using for enrichment in memory so you can join it really efficiently uh, in order to keep and maintain the throughput that you're looking for from the overall system. You want the stream processing to be optimized. So it should really run as fast as if you'd written it, it yourself kind of manually. Um, but it also needs to be easy to use. So we recommend that you look for SQL-based stream processing because SQL is the language of data. There are very few people that work with data that don't understand SQL. And it allows you to do filtering and transformation and data enrichment through natural SQL constructs. Now, obviously, if you want to do more complex things, you should also be, able to be allowed to import your own transformations and work with those. 
uh, but for uh, SQL based transformations it enables anyone that knows data to be able to build and understand what the transformations are. You also want building pipelines to be as easy, easily accessible as possible to all the people that want to work with the data. So you need to have a good UI for building the data pipelines and have as much of the process automated through wizards and other uh, UI-based assistants as possible. You need to be able to build multi-step stream processing. So not just single source into single target or a single source into single piece of processing into single target, but potentially with fan in and fan out, multiple data sources coming in, going into multiple processing steps in a, a staged environment where they go step by step by step um, to potentially multiple targets coming out at the other end. And this all needs to be coordinated and well maintained um, and deployable across a cluster in order to be scalable. So your stream processing should be um, very rich, very capable and also very high throughput. You also need to think about the enterprise grade qualities of the platform. So I've mentioned before, for it to be enterprise grade, it needs to be scalable. So you need to be able to handle increasing the throughput, increasing the number of sources, increasing the number of targets, increasing the volume of data being generated from each one of those. So when you're evaluating platforms and you're evaluating for a production scenario, you should test the platform with uh, a reasonable throughput that corresponds to what you're expecting in order to see how it behaves and see how it scales and measure the throughput and the latency from end to end as you're evaluating the platform. You also need it to be reliable. So you need to be able to ensure that you have guaranteed delivery from source all the way to target, even if something fails, if a network fails, if the source or the target goes down, if any of the processing nodes in the cluster go down or the whole cluster goes down. You need to be able to ensure that it picks up from where it left off and doesn't miss any messages. So it has to be able to recover from failures as well. So guaranteed delivery in the normal, I'm always running case, so you don't miss any messages uh, just because they disappeared into the ether somewhere. But also that if you have a failure, you should recover and not lose any messages, not lose any events that come from the source into the target. And of course, security is also paramount that you can secure the data while it's moving in transit, so it's encrypted as it goes across the network, but also that you can secure who has access to the data, who can work with individual data streams, who can see the data on individual data streams, who can build applications, who can view the results of building applications. So you need security that works across the whole end-to-end -end and deals with every single component so that you can secure them and lock them down and make sure that only the people that need to work with data can. And finally, you need to make sure that the platform gives you visibility into your data, that you can monitor the data flows and see what's going on in real time, that you get alerts when anything happens. Um, it could be when CPU or memory usage on any of the nodes goes above certain criteria. It could be when applications crash or data flows crash. It could be when volume goes above or below what you expect and doing that in a granular fashion. Volume for an individual database table goes above or below what you expect. So you need to be able to build and, and work with kind of um, insights into the data flows that help you operationalize this and make sure that it's working uh, full time 24 seven when you actually put it into production. And you may even want to get insights on the data itself, drill down into the actual data that's flowing and do some analytics on that. So if your streaming integration platform can also give you those valuable insights on the streaming data, then that's the icing on the cake. So just to summarize, when you're evaluating streaming data integration platforms, you need to make sure that the platform can do everything that you need to get your data from where it's generated to where it needs to be in order to get real value out of your data.